Welcome back guys. Alright, so we are going to start assembling the differentials into the bulkheads. Uh, we're going to start with the front one. So uh, let's get it done. Uh, running 50,000 weight in the uh, diff here. Um, running two, as you can see there, I'm sure you can. There are two factory arma shims. They're point two, so we are moving that gear over point four of a millimeter towards that pinion. When you buy them and they are shimmed, they'll typically come with one point two millimeter shim. Um, like I said, I like to use four. Uh, that's the way this diff was set up in this housing. I try not to swap them around too much. I try to keep them so the shim stack stays the same. Um, basically just something to keep in mind. So we're just going to jam some bearings into this thing. Some brand new bearings. These are uh, Jim's bearings on uh, eBay. Got them from eBay. I like his bearings. Um, they seem to last a while. I do service my bearings. You know, any of them that aren't completely shot, I will pull apart, clean out, and regrease. So uh, I've had the best luck with the Jim's bearings. It seems to just uh, always come back to him. I always go back there. So, you know, I highly recommend him. He, he's got some good stuff, and for a reasonable cost. So now that the bearings are installed, we're going to take the pinion. And we are going to get this in the case. Now sometimes I will shim, depending on, you know, the gear sets. I will get a shim. Jeez, yeah, this light is bad. But uh, I will get a shim up under that gear, behind the input gear. Right. Oh. Right on the face of that thing. I'll get a shim right on this land here. And uh, it gives you a little more tooth contact. Pinion is, pinion is installed. We're going to move on to the cup. Um, everything has to be clean and dry. So we are going to clean up the grub screw with some alcohol and uh, the cup as well. So our Loctite sticks. I use blue Loctite for the cups. Uh, seems to work pretty good. Haven't had any come loose on me. Uh, it's just very important that you uh, keep everything extremely clean. So, alcohol is uh, your best friend when it uh, comes to grub screws and Loctite and all these farts that are metal to metal. So I'm just spinning it in some uh, alcohol. You can see how dirty that rag, you know, the screw actually was, pulling all the uh, impurities off it. So we got that all straightened out. And then we'll clean up this cup the best we can. Um... I like to just make a little dimple in the towel and get it in there. Try to clean out those threads the best you can. I mean, you can clean this with brake clean, alcohol, whatever you like. Now that we got the pinion installed and seated, pinion cups clean, we are going to uh, get a little Loctite on this screw. This scrub screw here. Get a little Loctite on that which is here it's actually a little bit around the edge I will use that right up no problem a little leakage helps me out in the long run so we got the screw nice and covered you want to do a little bit on the end too it'll help it bite to the shaft get this started Now when you put this together, 
you want 100% to make sure that there's no space between the cup, the bearing, face, and the cup. You want that to uh, squeeze together, be pretty solid. So what I'll do is I will put my thumb down in here, right on the input gear, and point her finger on the cup, and just lightly squeeze. You don't have to crush the hell out of it, you just gotta lightly, gently squeeze it. We'll get that set screw to set down. Beautiful. Alright, so, you know, that will ensure that there's no side-to-side -side play. There's no yield in that gear. And, uh, you know, that's something that happens and comes with time with bearings. It's something you got to keep an eye on. The more you run them, the more yield it's going to uh, apply. So, you know, you, have, you run a greater risk of taking out some teeth. So, basically, there it is. Take a little towel and just clean up whatever is left of the Loctite. And uh, that's uh, copacetic. So basically we're going to wait 24 hours on the Loctite. Obviously that's not going to prohibit us from continue the build. So uh, next step is to get the differential into the bulkhead. Uh, check the backlash. Uh, hopefully the mesh works out well. I mean, this was all preset before. I just needed to change some bearings and stuff. Uh, as long as there's no discrepancy in the bearing width, all my shimming should be okay. Uh, again, this is point four, two washers or shims stacked on top of each other, both point two, so a total of point four. We're gonna slide this cup down in here. Make sure your shims are uh, finding their home okay. Uh, last thing you want to do is bend them. So we got that in there, and uh, next thing I'm gonna do is get the cap on it, and we're gonna tighten down some screws. And then we're going to check the backlash. Alright, we're snugged up good. So what I'm looking for here is uh, actually backlash, you know, a little bit of space in the gear. <clears throat> Typically I like to set these up when... When the gear sets are brand new, I like to set them up so they are literally zero lash. I know that sounds crazy, but uh, you'd be surprised how fast these bearings yield away once they're used and spun at a you know, couple thousand RPM. So, you know, you will end up with uh, some backlash, you know, as the bearings start to yield. Um, this here... You know, it is a used gear set. I am getting a little bit of backlash. It's probably, you know, if it was a pinion and a spur gear at the motor, uh, it would be acceptable, at least by my standards. Um, but it, it seems a little bit loose. I, uh, I feel like I want to throw um, another shim at it and uh, try to get it to move over a little bit more. Um, Another option I have as well, I mean, uh, I can also pin, uh, shim the pinion. I can uh, shim that out, probably point one or point .2. Um, again, you know, it'll, it'll give you some more tooth contact. So, um, we'll pull it back apart. So, now that we're back apart, um... I think the first approach is going to be, I'll just add another uh, 0.1 shim on the outside of this and uh, see where that gets me. Um, next step would be to pull this back apart and uh, shim the pinion. Um, like I said, I mean, sometimes I do do that. This case might be one of them. <clears throat> I'm... Again, heading for, uh, you know, uh, zero lash. Um, uh, like I said, it sounds crazy, but uh, it's really not that crazy. The uh, bearings yield fairly quick, and you will end up with lash. So, uh, you know, the closer you can get it to zero from the rip, the better off you are. So, 
So I'll just slide in another uh, shim on there. And we are going to reinsert this and uh, see what we have. Alright, same deal. We are going to get this together. Snug her down. Uh, it's very important that the cap is on it and everything is tight. Um, you know, the housing does tend to try to spread so the cap will uh, make sure that doesn't happen and make sure everything is uh, right where it should be. Alright, let's give her a check. That is super close, like I'm pretty content with that. That is extremely close to zero. Um, it rolls through smooth, everything seems to be okay. So, uh, basically this one's done. I didn't have to shim the pinion. Um, so this one is ready for assembly. This is, uh, gonna have to go right in the truck. One thing I just have to do is, um, uh, throw some grease in it. Uh, I like to use, uh, Lucas, red and tacky. Uh, this stuff is great. Um, I used marine grease for years. That also works as well. I love that as well. But the red and tacky seems to really stick around. So, uh, you know, I typically use this. And uh, what I'll do is I will usually just um, fill the ring gear teeth. And that's about it. I mean, I, I don't pack the hell out of the case or anything like that. Um, I'll usually just fill the ring gear teeth right to the top you know pack it right in there like so so and then I'll roll it around and uh, that'll be it give it a roll through see if there's uh, anything missing any spots see like there's a little spot right here Definitely could use a little grease. We'll uh, fill that tooth. Um, like I said, just uh, as long as every tooth has got some grease on it and you have some kind of pattern through here in the center, I mean, it's pretty sufficient. Um, honestly, you should be going through these uh, fairly often. You know, um, if you don't want any catastrophic failures, you should definitely be going through these. Um, Pretty often, I go through mine every, you know, five, six packs, um, or sets of packs if I'm running 3S uh, packs. So, you know, um, it gives me time to catch possible issues. So, you know, I, I like to take them apart and uh, just make sure everything is happy. Last thing we want is uh, some catastrophic failure over something that could have been prevented. And there it is, guys. This is a front diff ready to rock and roll. So now we're on to the rear. Now we're on to the rear. Um, we're going to assemble this the same way. <clears throat> as you can see, I'm lazy. I didn't want to take apart the A arms and all that stuff. Left it all as one piece. No big deal. Uh, it's a little more to work around, but I make it happen. Start with the bearings, soak them right in there real quick. Throw our pinion in, our input gear as they call it. Again, in the automotive industry it's pinion gear. Now this one I'm going to dry fit. I'm not going to lock tight the cuff yet. I want to get the uh, shimming correct on this one first. Again, you know, light pressure in on the cup and the pinion. You want to make sure uh, that that cup is sitting against that inner pinion race. All 
right? So we got no in and out flag, no end flag. You want that to be, uh, you know, pretty firm. Again, the bearings are going to yield. You're going to end up with a little play there. So the closer you can get everything to zero, the better off you are. Now this one I'm unsure about, um, this has two shims stacked on it, just like the front one, but uh, these are actually .1 shims, there's two of them doubled up, so uh, it's a total of .2, now we're back to a factory Arma shim basically. So this on um, is a little suspect, uh, it must have been good when I had it together the first time, um, so we're just going to double check it now before I go lock tight in the uh, grub screw on the cup. She's being a little stubborn. Bearing slid. There she goes. Alright, so without even putting the cap on, I can see there's a significant amount of lash there. So uh, this one's going to have to be shimmed out a little more for sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a thousand, or uh, a thousandths. I'm going to put a .1 shim here, uh, another one on this stack. See how that feels real quick. If it's still pretty loose, um, I might be going after a pinion shim on this one. So we're going to add another one to the stack. So now we are at point three, and uh, same deal, we're just going to roll this in here. Make sure your shims are going to go down into the bore correctly. Don't want to bend the shims, that ends up being a real pain. Once they're bent, um, you know, they just, they never seem to want to go against the uh, housing correctly. so we're in our shim stack rolled in there fine everything is flush and even so our shim stack is flush with the outer bearing race you know you don't want any of those sticking up you want to make sure they are flush so we're just going to give it a quick test before I assemble any cap that actually doesn't feel bad so what we're going to do is we are going to Soak this down, get the cap installed, and uh, we're going to soak this up real quick. And we are going to check one more time before we uh, do any Loctite. Alright, we got that all taken care of, and now we are going to... Check one more time, see what we have for uh, any kind of backlash. Just going to put my thumb on the ring gear and uh, just roll this back and forth a tiny bit. And you know, um, <clears throat> that's pretty close to zero. I think I'm going to call it there. Don't believe this is going to need a pinion shim. Uh, the teeth are in pretty good shape and stuff, so we're not going to drive that gear in any further. But uh, just uh, just about zero. Um, we have a tiny bit of lash, so uh, I think it's acceptable. Uh, it's close enough to zero. I think uh, you know if we go to another uh, another point one, it may, it might be too tight and it's going to be crunchy. Um, and just asking to uh, kill some bearings real quick. So that'll wrap it up, guys. Um, now the differentials are done. We are on to building this thing. Uh, Bashcast is about to come to life. So uh, stay tuned and uh, we're going to get this rolling.